Vietnam is a small village on the Jua River in southern Sudan. I flew from Nairobi, Kenya to Loki, Kenya on a commercial flight and then by small charter on to Vietnam. The five-hour flight from Loki took me over the flooding Nile River. Each year it floods an area almost as big as North Dakota called the Sud. It's one of the world's largest marshes and difficult to get through, much less live in. As we flew over, I happened to see a couple of boats heading downstream. Further upstream in Juba, Sudan, is the end of the navigable portion of the Nile. Vietnam is located in southern Sudan, but just south of the Darfur region that you hear so much about in the news. It's on the Jura River, and there is a small airstrip to land on if it's not too muddy from the heavy rains during the wet season when I was there. I met James Bach, the Alarm Regional Director for the area. He's one of the lost boys of Sudan that you hear about. After leaving the area as a young boy to escape the Civil War, he returned to his home as a member of Alarm. The Alarm compound consists of a primary school and a two-room training center. In March of 2007, three water wells were drilled on the grounds, giving the area the first new wells and clean water in years. Under construction is an 11-room guest house and a dining hall. There's a building to house three businesses run by the local women, a four-room addition to the existing primary school, and a new secondary school. It's a very busy place. The guest house will provide a place for visiting instructors at the training center to stay. And the dining hall will provide meals for the staff and the students. The building for the women's business will house a seamstress slash tailor shop, a butcher shop, and a Sim Sim nut oil shop. The addition to the primary school will allow space for 200 more boys and girls to get a basic education. The secondary school is the nearest one within 70 kilometers and will offer the first ever secondary education for girls in that state. The three wells provide clean water to thousands of local residents. Soon, all three wells will have submersible electric pumps and will feed a central water tower via underground pipes. Instead of pumping water by hand, they'll be able to go to a water faucet and fill their jerry cans and jugs just by turning the valve. James took me on his motorbike to some area villages to see how they get water now. We rode 12 kilometers east of Vietnam to an even smaller village called Waring so that he could show me how they gather water when there is no well close by. James explains. This place is uh, uh, is uh, is a uh, sort of water when the rain water rain the water comes here and w the woman here she was just taking water uh, because of that water which they have just dug a small hole to drink here and then during when this one is dried up they can be able to dig a big uh, uh, a big hole that they can be able to get water so this where this uh, village now they are drinking from this uh, stagnant water they they, 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 they dig down and they can be able to get water. So this is the source of their life now for water. Then during dry season, they can be able to dig a big one for them to drink. So the, the water you see there, that is now the source of, 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 of water. And it's not clean. It has so many insects. It has uh, so many things there. And that is why they are able to get diseases and all this. So uh, that is how this village lives. They don't have a single palm. Yeah.